this is Kevin Mayo, and today we're going to drink some Ithaca Flower Power. It is their India Pale Ale. There is a date on here. I'm hoping it was bottled on 211.15, but it looks like 211.16. I can't imagine the beer is going to be fresh for a whole year, especially as it is an IPA. Their website does give you a pretty good description of what the ingredients are. I'll include that underneath later. Uh, but it is a five hop, five different times between one hop, dry hop. So other than that, I don't know too much about Ithaca beer. Their website doesn't give me a lot of background. I know they've been around for a long time. And I've had this beer once or two, once or twice on draft, but I haven't really ever sat down and did a full review of it. So we'll go ahead and give it a crack and see what we got. As always, if you like the reviews, please subscribe because we're always looking for new friends. And go ahead and leave comments because we love talking about beer. I did a quick look at like Rate Beer too. It has a good score on Rate Beer. And I don't usually do a lot of stuff with them, but for some reason when I was Googling it, they were the first thing that came up. So we got a nice dark yellow... A uh, fair amount of carbonation and slightly hazy, maybe a finger and a half of bright white head. A fairly typical looking IPA, maybe a little more to the yellow side rather than to the orange side, but other than that, fairly typical looking bottle of beer, or a glass of beer as the case may be. Let's do the aroma. So we got a little bit of... Um, well, not a little bit, but you, you do get some bready malt up front. And you get some of that dank, rich earth, pine. A little bit of spice, like a pepper. And a little bit of grapefruit down underneath. So, all in all, a fairly typical aroma on an IPA and that's not a bad thing that's pretty much what I would expect and really bang just what you want from an IPA I get the malt up front it's just a hint of toffee caramel it's got bitter at the back end I got some great fruit I got some pine. I mean, really dead on, perfect, drinkable IPA. Right in that list of, I mean, some of my go-tos. You know, I'm in a, if I'm just going to pick up a six-pack, something to drink, and, you know, I'm not looking... Um, yeah, I'm just looking for something to drink, you know, while I'm watching TV, watching a game, going to a party. I, you know, I eat Lagunitas, Dogfish Head 60, um, you know, things I can get all the time. Reasonably sessionable, though this one I believe is 7.5% ABV, so it's a little bit on the other end. Uh, trying to think of some of the other ones I would pick up all the time, and you can get them fairly easily. Oh, Goose, Goose Island IPA, I mean, it's boom, right there exactly what you want from an IPA um, very 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 delicious I'm enjoying this immensely and judging by the tasting notes I'm thinking this is probably I'm hoping this was brewed 211 because it seems to be really nice and fresh and really good a little bit more bitter a little more West Coast leaning than like the Lagunitas and Dogfish Head uh, you know, it's probably more, and I haven't had it in a while, but similar to a Firestone Walker or um, the, like the Union Jack or the um, Sculpin. So a little bit more towards a West Coast style, and it, it finishes with a bigger IBU kick than the Dogfish Head and the Lagunitas. But I'm digging this beer a lot. Like I said, nice. Toffee malt up front, grapefruit, pine, cut grass, a hint of that spice that I mentioned earlier, that pepper, just a hint of it. Finishes bitter, and it finishes reasonably smooth. Sometimes you get dried out, not too much, a little bit on the drying end of it. 
That's a good thing because you want to drink more beer. I mean, score wise, bang, it's right there. It's a B plus beer. We're going to give us a solid 88 out of 100. Until next time, keep drinking.